Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to my channel. So I'm breaking from the normal format for uh, a few videos or maybe more than a few videos because at the time I'm recording this video, it's isolation time throughout the world and you know all the salons are closed. I look like a caveman and I don't even have my recording equipment set up in the new location where I'm recording just yet, but I definitely wanted to make some new content for you guys and keep this series going. So that's what I'm going to do. Now in this video, I want to talk a little bit about shell variables. Now I've mentioned shell variables several times throughout the series, but so far we have not had a dedicated video on that subject. So what is a shell variable? Well, if you've ever used a programming language, you know exactly what a variable is. And when we're talking about Bash, basically the default shell on most distributions of Linux, the concept of variables is exactly the same. We could set basically a variable, we could create a variable and set it equal to something, and then we can recall that information later. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to, well, show you guys an example. So let's go ahead and get to it. So what I'm going to do is create a variable right now, and then I'm going to explain exactly how it works. So I'm going to create a variable named hello. And I'm going to set it equal to a string. So for a string, we want double quotes. More on that later. And then I'm going to go ahead and type a message. So I just wrote CentOS is awesome. Well, because it is. So I'll press enter. And well, I guess it looks like nothing happened, right? Well, it didn't error. So I know that this command was successful. So what we have done is we have created a variable named hello, and we've set it equal to CentOS is awesome. So that's all well and good, but what can we actually do with that? So what I'm gonna do right now is use the echo command and I'm going to echo that variable name right here. But it didn't work. Well, actually, when you want to read the contents of a shell variable, you need to actually put the dollar sign symbol like that in front of it so it knows that you are referring to an actual variable. Otherwise, a command like echo is just going to echo whatever you type. Specifically, what we want to do is see what the variable is equal to. So we need the dollar sign for that. We didn't need the dollar sign when we set the variable. We need it though when we actually refer to the variable. So if I press enter here, we can see that it actually printed the message. So I mentioned earlier when I created the variable that I was going to be creating a string. Now, this is not a tutorial series on programming, although, you know, when it comes to Bash, it basically is kind of like a programming language because you could do a lot of the same things in Bash that you can do in a proper programming language. And you can, of course, create variables, and variables can be strings, which basically means a string of characters. And a variable can even be a simple number. Now, you might be wondering, you know, why should I care about variables? Why should I learn this? And if you're not going into programming, you're especially wondering why you should be learning this. But as you get deeper and deeper into Linux administration, you'll find yourself writing scripts to automate processes and things that you do on a daily basis. That's just the natural progression. And when you do that, you'll find yourself needing to refer to things later and needing to save things for later use. And variables will help you do just that. Now, what I'm going to do right now is give you an example that's somewhat contrived but it's going to show you basically that you can use variables in your daily command. So what I'm going to do is create a variable. I'm just going to call it my dir, short for directory, obviously. And you know, one thing you might be wondering is why am I always creating variables in all caps? Would it still work if I did it in lowercase? Well, yeah, it would. It's just a very common thing to do in the Linux community. Not everyone does it. So you will see some scripts out there where that's not the case. There's nobody that's going to scream at you if you do it, you know, with lowercase, although let's be honest, you know, some people are more particular than others. But the fact of the matter is, it's just a common thing to create your variable names in all caps, but ultimately it's up to you whether or not you want to follow that. So 
what I'm going to do is just uh, create a variable again, my dir, and I'm going to set it equal to something. And what I'm going to do is set it equal to Etsy, SSH, basically like a path, right? So obviously this example is going to be a bit lame because it's probably much easier just to CD or type that directory path right there than it is to create a variable. But let's just go ahead and do it. So I created the variable. And then what we can do is pwd. You already know that we are in our home directory right now. So what I'm going to do is cd into, you guessed it, my dir. So what's going to happen? Well, you can see right away that the path that we are basically working in has changed. And if I do pwd, then it's moved us into Etsy SSH. So right away, you can see a potential use case here. If you are going to constantly be referring to a very specific directory, and maybe it's longer than, you know, slash Etsy slash SSH, maybe you have a very long path, you might want to create a variable for it. And then basically you could just CD into that directory. You can LS because again, I could just run any command here against the variable since it contains a path. It's just a string that has a path. I could use LS. And I can refer to this anytime I want to without having to type it every time. And then when you get into scripting, if that's something that you get into, then if you need to set a directory path in there and you need to refer to it multiple times throughout the script, you could basically just put the directory as a variable. And then at the top of the script, you simply just change what the variable equals basically if you need to change the path. So that essentially prevents you from doing a find and replace. So what I'm going to do is change back to my home directory. And wait, wait a minute. How did I do that? CD dollar sign home. Well, that's clearly a variable because it has a dollar sign in there. And I was able to use the CD command against it. But how exactly did that work? I didn't set that. At least you didn't see me do it. I didn't do it off camera, I promise. So actually, some variables are created for us on the shell that we can refer to even though we didn't create those variables ourselves. So what I'm going to do is run the env command, short for environment obviously, and I'll press enter. And wow, look at this. We have a ton of variables. These are all variables and you can see they're all in caps here. And we have all kinds of things and I didn't set any of these. So we can see already right here that the home variable is set to my home directory. So some of these variables are just part of your environment. They're just part of your session. They're here by default. It basically goes beyond the scope of this tutorial, this series to go down deep in the weeds of how these variables got set. But the important thing to take away here is that there are some variables that, that are set by default. You can override any of these if you'd like, but these variables are here and you can use the env command to see what session variables you actually have that are being applied to your session here. And we can see like my username, so I could refer to that anytime and even shorter, just simply user. I have my desktop session, so if I needed to run a query on someone's desktop session, I could query that variable. And I could see that the person, in my case, I am logged into GNOME here. So there's all kinds of information that you can get just by looking at the environment. And these are variables that are created for you that you can then refer to later. This video is sponsored by Linode, my cloud infrastructure provider for over two years. Linode provides Linux servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site, or service live in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux power user or just starting out, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application, or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy game servers, WordPress sites, personal VPNs, and much more. You can even upload and run your own image. Servers can be easily scaled up or down, so you only pay for what you need. And regular backups are also available so you'll never lose your work. Best of all, Linode comes with 24-7 support that is 100% managed by humans by phone support or support ticket. To get $20 in free credit when you create your new Linode account, sign up at linode.com slash learnlinuxtv. The link is in the description. I'd like to thank Linode for not only being awesome, but also for their continued support of my channel. I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. 
Now there is a variable that I want to show you that is kind of important here. I guess it might be somewhat of a stretch to, uh, you know, call it a variable, although it kind of is. So first of all, I'm going to run the ls command. No surprise there. Just list the storage. You've seen this probably a thousand times by now. But what I want to do right now is echo the contents of another variable. And what I'm going to echo the contents of is this variable right here, dollar sign question mark. So I'll press enter and I get zero. What the heck is that? So just to illustrate the difference, what I'm going to do is type ls and the directory that I want to list the storage of is this directory does not exist because it doesn't. I'll press enter and it aired out. We probably expected that to happen because there is no directory or series of directories that fits that path there. So if I echo that again, we got a two. So, okay, so what's going on here? So when you echo dollar sign question mark, you are trying to get the exit code of the previous command. A zero means a success. So what I did here was I ran the ls command and then it showed me basically the contents of my current working directory, just like we would expect it to. And it was able to do that. I, I issued the command, it gave me the results, and then it returned. So that was a successful command. It LS did its job, it showed me the directories, so we're good. But when I did this command right here, I ran LS against this contrived example directory path right here. It's telling me, well, I can't access that. No such file or directory. That is an error. And it basically echoed out a two right here. Um, so basically zero is success and anything that's not zero is a failure. So what you can glean from this is that echoing dollar sign question mark will tell you whether or not the previous command was successful. Now you might be thinking that this is kind of useless because we know full well that this command definitely was not successful because we got an error so we know it failed, right? But if you are running in a script, then you might want to run or create an if statement that does something different depending on the exit code. So if something fails, maybe you want to send an email to your administration team to let them know that there was a failure. So if you run a command and then it fails, it check for the, you know, the error, the exit code there. And then if the exit code is not zero, send the email, let people know that it failed. Otherwise, if it's zero, okay, everything's fine. We can proceed. And when you are running a script, you generally don't have someone that is sitting in front of a terminal. I mean, you could, but a lot of times you have a script that's running in the background during a previously scheduled time and, you know, no one's sitting there. So you want some kind of automation and sometimes that does require checking the exit code. So that's why you would want to use that. But I wanted to basically point out that that does indeed exist. And another thing that I want to do as well is just show you guys. So I basically created some variables throughout this particular video and one of them was my dir, right? So I need to echo that to show you guys that it does still exist and it does. So then what I'm going to do is open a new terminal and what I'm going to do is echo my dir. Well, it doesn't give me any output, but it worked here, right? We probably already have figured out where I'm going with this. When you close your terminal session, you start a different terminal session, then that means that that variable is gone. If I was to close this session right here, of course that variable will be gone here. But it's not a global variable, it's a local variable. This myDir variable is just local to this particular session and it doesn't carry over to other sessions. So that's something that you need to remember. And you can also basically edit your .bashrc file if you'd like to create a variable that's going to stay persistent and recreate itself when you open up a new shell. So that's one way we can go about that. But of course, like most things in Linux, you know, there's multiple ways that we can go about this. So I know that was a shorter video, guys. I just feel like there's some concepts that I should have gone over closer to the beginning of the series. And I just figured I would spend the next several videos or so just going through all the smaller components that I should have covered by now just to make sure that your knowledge of CentOS is complete. 
So I'll go ahead and see you in the next video. I'll get that uploaded as soon as I possibly can. And once I have that up here, I will see you there. So stay tuned.